Hello everyone. Welcome to the sixth video lecture of Communication Networks and Transmission Lines. In this lecture, we will be seeing the iterative impedances of a half section. Of a half section then the image impedances of of a half section then after discussing this we will see what are matching networks next we will see what when by insertion loss and this will be followed by so numerical size tutorial problems in the previous lecture we have seen an l network as a special case of an asymmetrical t or a pi network and we have derived its iterative impedances So, if we have an L network like this, let is a dash be the CD sum impedance and is a V dash be is shundam impedance. Then Let Z T2 be the iterative impedance with respect to the 2 to dash terminal. And let Is a T1 be the iterative impedance with respect to terminal 1 1 dash. So we have written Z T1 is equal to half of minus Z. A dash plus root of Z A dash square plus 4 Z A dash Z B dash similarly we have also written the expression for the identity impedance Z T2 as equal to Half of Z A dash plus root of Z A dash square plus four Z A dash Z B dash. So that is the iterative impedances
now what is a half section so in our um, lecture one we has discussed that if we have a t network like this So this is our general T network whose total series time impedance is equal to Z1. So this is Z1 by 2 and this is also Z1 by 2 and the total shunt arm impedance is equal to Z2. Okay. So these are the terminals, input and output terminals. So we can represent this network in terms of its equivalent half sections as follows so we can divide this network into two equal half sections so up to here is one half And the remaining half you can draw like this. So we have split that is T network into two equal halves. So this will be the 1 1 dash terminal, and this is the 2 2 dash terminal. So the impedance is this is 1 by 2, this also will be this 1 by 2. And this will be twice Z2, this will also be twice Z2. Now we can take any one half. So we can take this half, which will turn out to be shape of an L network. So I redraw that network. Here like this so the series of impedance is Z1 by 2 the shandam impedance is twice Z2 So I can uh, relabel re this net terminal size 11 one dash and 22 two dash of our new L network. The input side as well as the output side. Now we can view this network as a special case of an L network with Z A dash is replaced by Z1 by 2 and Z B dash is replaced by 2 Z2. So for this particular L network we have replaced this Z A dash and Z B dash using our uh, branch parameter branch elements of this particular half section. Now you can write the expressions for the iterative impedances is a T1 and is a T2 for this particular half section using the above equation. So I can write is a T1 for this half section is equal to half of minus is a 1 by 2. Is a A dash here is replaced by is at 1 by 2 plus root of is at 1 square by 4 plus 4 is at 1 by 2 into 2 is at 2. Okay. 
so you can cancel these two and rewrite this as half of minus is at 1 by 2 plus root of is at 1 square by 4 plus 4 is at 1 is at 2. So this is the iterative impedance, it's a T1 of this particular half section. Okay. Similarly, we can write it's a T2 as for this particular half section equal to half of is at 1 by 2 plus root of is at 1 square by 4 plus 4 is at 1 is at 2. Now coming to the image impedances. So we have derived the image impedances for an L network. So this we have derived from a asymmetrical T network. So we took L network as a special case of a T of an asymmetrical T network. So one one dash is the in terminal and two two dash are the output terminals. And we have is a dash as a series of impedance and is a b dash as the shutdown impedance. So for this particular network say let is at i2 be the image impedance at 2 to dash and is at i1 be the image impedance at 1 1 dash terminal so we have written the image impedance is at i1 for this network as equal to square root of is a dash square plus is a dash to is a b dash similarly we can write is a i2 the image impedance with respect to 2 2 dash terminal so in the previous lecture we have written this as is a i2 is equal to square root of is a dash to is a b dash square divided by is a dash plus is a b dash so we can multiply the numerator and denominator with is a dash so we will have is a dash square into is a b dash square in the numerator divided by is a dash square plus is a dash into is a b dash in the denominator so we can rewrite this as is a dash into is a b dash divided by root of is a dash square plus is a dash into is a b dash. So we'll write this expression as is a to e is equal to is a dash is a b dash divided by square root of is a dash square plus is a dash into is a b dash. So these are the image impedances for this particular L network. Now what if we replace this L network with our half section? 
so we have the half section so this is z1 by 2 the series of impedance the shunt arm impedance is twice is at 2 okay so what are the image impedances for this particular half section and this b is at i2 and is at i1 b the image impedance at On one dash terminal, okay. So this is two two dash, so one one dash. This is is at I one. So we can write the expressions for the image impedances using these expressions for L network. So we can write is at I one as so. We will replace Z A dash with Z1 by 2 and Z B dash with 2 Z2 in our expression for this L network. Okay. So the image impedance Z I1 is equal to square root of Z A dash square. So that will be Z1 square by 4. Plus Z A dash into Z B dash. So that will be Z1 by 2 into twice Z2. So that could be rewritten as square root of Z1 square by 4 plus Z1 Z2. Right. Now what is this Z1 square by 4 plus Z1 Z2? This is nothing but the characteristic impedance of a T network that is Z0 T right so we find that the image impedance of a half section with respect to terminal 1 and dash that is this one is nothing but our Z0 T that is a characteristic impedance of a T network. Similarly, the expression for the image impedance is at I2 is equal to so this is our expression is at A dash into is at B dash divided by root of is at A dash square plus is at A dash into is at B dash. So when we replace this is at A dash with is at 1 by 2 we will have is at 1 by 2 in the numerator into is at b dash is twice is at 2 divided by square root of is at 1 square by 4 plus is at 1 by 2 into 2 is at 2 so this will be equal to is at 1 is at 2 upon root of Z1 square by 4 plus Z1 Z2. Now what is this? We can add array this as the characteristic impedance of a pi network. Right. So we find that the image impedance of a half section with respect to this terminal 2 to dash terminal that is nothing but our is a not pi that is the characteristic impedance of a pi network so this is a property that we will use for matching this uh, a typical t network as well as a pi network using a half section
like this. So what are matching networks? So matching networks are those networks which are used for impedance matching between a load and a source or between two networks. So matching networks are those networks used for matching the impedance between a source and a load or between two networks okay so why matching is done matching is done to reduce the reflection so when we reduce the reflection we can maximize the power transfer so matching is done to reduce the reflection and thereby maximizing the power transfer. Okay. So the idea is, for example, we have say so one network. The N one. And we have another network N2 so this network will have a typical impedance when we look from this terminal so let me leave this as 11 dash and 22 dash for network N1 so will be 1 1 dash and 2 2 dash for network N2. So when I look at this network N1 from this side, say that, say that I get an impedance, say is at N1 2. Okay. Similarly, when I look at this N2 network from the input side, I will have a different impedance, say is at N2 1. So that is the impedance of network N2 when you look from the first port. Okay. And is that N12 is the impedance of network N1 when we look from port 2. So if we have is that N12 not equal to is that N21 and we try to connect this network directly. We will have something called impedance mismatch. So what will happen is the signal that is passing from N1 to N2 will undergo reflection and hence 
the power transferred from N1 network N1 to N2 will be reduced. So in order to avoid this, what we can do is we can design a typical matching network. Let me say that M. So M is our matching network designed for N1 and N2. So M is a matching network which can match the networks N1 and N2. So what is the condition for designing M? M condition is that the impedance of the first port of this M network should be equal to Z N12 that is this impedance so N12 is the impedance of network N1 at 2 2 dash terminal so that will come here right and what about the impedance at 2 2 dash of M? It should be the same as the impedance of network N2 at the first port. So that should be equal to Z N21. So once I design such a network, then I can insert this network like this in between the N1 and N2 networks for the purpose of matching the impedance. Now when the signal goes from N1 from this terminal it sees the impedance N12. So the impedances are matched from N1 to the input side of M. So there won't be any reflection happening at this network. And what about the impedance at the 2 2 dash of M? That is the same as is at N21. So that will that is matching with the input impedance of network N2. So there won't be any reflection at this point also as the signal passes from network M, our matching network to the N2 network. So this is the idea of matching networks. Also, you have to remember that when we are inserting a network like this, what we will have is a phenomenon called insertion loss. Okay, so that thing will happen. So, inserting a matching network. Courses from power loss which we call it as is equal to the insertion loss. Okay. Now, how can we define this insertion loss? So, let us consider Our source so we have a voltage source so let this be the generator voltage VG and is a GPD 
internal impedance of this generator. Now it needs to be connected to say some load. Let Z L be the impedance of this load. So what comes in between this source and the load is our network in which matching network will be a part of it okay so we insert a network like this it may be a transmission line sql and model so this is the network N that we are going to insert in between the source VG and the load here. Okay. So when such a network is introduced, there will be some loss in the power in the network N. So originally, let us assume that if this network was not here, it will deliver say power P1. So P1 is the power received at load without the network N. So if uh, N was not sitting and the generator and the load are directly connected. Okay, so that is the key is when There is no N. So we have only the generator and the load with their impedances. Okay, so we have the generator voltage Vg and its internal impedance is a G to which we are directly connecting the load having load impedance is a L. So at this point we will have some power delivered from this generator to the load so that we will call as the power p1 okay so let the current be i1 at that time okay now the case when network n is inserted in between the source and the load so when this happens, let us assume that the new current is now I2. Okay. So the new power delivered to the load is, let us say, P2. Okay. So what is P2? P2 is the power. received at load with network N inserted between in the source and load so since we are as, uh, inserting a passive network 
the power delivery will be reduced when we insert a network n so what results is that we will have this p2 power which will be less than the p1 power so p1 is the power when we did not have any network inserted between the source and the load so when we insert the network n some power is attenuated within this network n so as a result we will get a reduced power p2 now what is insertion loss so we can define a term called insertion loss in decibel let us call it as l in db as equal to 10 logarithm of the ratio of p1 to p2 okay so what is p1 p1 is the power that is delivered from the source to the load without the network inserted and what is the p2 p2 is the power delivered from the source to load with the network n inserted in between them so since we have p2 less than p1 so this ratio will be a quantity larger than 1 hence we will have a positive quantity so that is the insertion loss that is happening when we are inserting this network n in between the source and the load so we can express this quantity in nepper also so l in nepper is the natural logarithm of square root of the ratio of these powers p1 upon p2 this can also be written as half ln p1 upon p2 so that is in nepper's insertion loss in nepper's Similarly, if you want to express this uh, insertion loss in terms of the ratio of the currents, so we have Mars marked two currents here, see I1 and I2. So I1 is the current when uh, without the network N inserted between the source and the load, and I2 is the current that is uh, flowing with the network N inserted. Then we can express this insertion loss in terms of the currents also. So we don't have to worry about the network type because uh, we are measuring the current flowing at the load. So we can express this in decibel. So L dB is, so what will happen? It will be square of the current. So we have 10 logarithm of P1 upon P2 is actually I1 upon I2 the whole square. Right. So that could be rewritten as so we can rewrite this as L in dB as equal to taking the square here we can rewrite this as 20 logarithm of I1 upon I2. Similarly, you can write in Nepper also, you can write the insertion loss L in Nepper as the uh, ratio of the currents. So again, it will be P1 and P2 will be replaced by I1 upon I2, the whole square. So that too will be taken here. So we will have the natural logarithm of I1 upon I2. So we can use either of these two methods to find out the insertion loss either we can use the power equation power ratios or we can use the current ratios okay next uh, we will see some numerical problems so the first example is 
So we are given a T network. and a pi network okay, so we are given the network like this so we have a t network as well as a pi network it is um, say the we are given that the branch elements the values of the branch elements are given so let this be 10 ohm and 10 ohm the series of impedances and this is say 15 ohm and for the pi network the series of impedance is 20 ohm <coughs> And this is say, 30 ohm, and this is also 30 ohm. So, on inspecting this network, okay, and we are asked to design a matching L network. So, when such a question is given, we can see that this network for this particular network Z1 is the same as 10 plus 10 which is equal to 20 ohm which is the same for the pi network also so that is the total series of impedance the total shutdown impedance is Z2 is equal to 15 and this is also here also it is 15 ohm Right. So, if you are asked to design a matching network for such between uh, such networks, we know that it is it will be a half section. So, we have uh, derived the image impedances for such type of half section. So this should be also be equal to Z1 by 2 and the shandam element should be equal to Z2 sorry twice Z2 okay so we have designed this so we can readily design such half sections so this should be equal to 10 ohm and this side should be having a characteristic impedance of Z0 T so this side should turn towards the T network and 2 is a 2 is nothing but 30 ohm and the impedance seen from this terminal that is the 2 2 dash terminal is the 1 1 dash terminal. So this impedance is actually is a not pi. So this end should turn towards the pi network. Okay. So how we can draw the matching network for this question so we insert this half section here like this so we have the 10 ohm and along the shandam we have the 30 ohm mirrors so this is the shandam and this overall thing is the matching network that we have designed. So this is our matching network that we have inserted in between the T network as well as the pi network that was given. <coughs> Another example we can take. 
is we are given a question like match a t network with a pi network having characteristic impedance is not t is equal to 600 ohm and the characteristic impedance of the pi network is not pi is equal to 400 ohm respectively So, in this question, we are given the characteristic impedances of the T as well as the pi network and we are asked to match this network using a L network. Okay. <coughs> So the idea here is that we are given the characteristic impedance of the T network. So we know that Z not T is square root of Z1 square by 4 plus Z1 is 2. So this is given as equal to 600 ohm. Also, we know one more thing that is Z not T into Z not pi is equal to Z1 into Z2. So both these quantities are given, right? So we can write Z1 Z2 as equal to Z0 T is 600 ohm into Z0 pi is 400 ohm. So that will evaluate to be 24000. Okay. So we can substitute this value in this equation and hence find out what is Z1. So, this equation implies Z1 square upon 4 plus Z1 Z2 is actually equal to 600 square. So, Z1 Z2 is we have found out. So, we can write Z1 upon 2 is equal to square root of 600 square minus to like 40,000 right so that should be equal to 346.41 uh, <coughs> So this is 346.41 ohm. Now we have Z1, Z2 like this. Okay, so we have to find out Z2 from this. So we have Z1 by 2 as this value. So Z2 is actually equal to 2 like 40,000 divided by Z1. So that is two lakh forty thousand divided by three forty six point four one into two. 
so that will evaluate to be f40 Thousand divided by 346.41 into 2. So that will relate to be 346.41 ohm. So what is twice is it to? So this into 2 692.82 So we got the values of the half section that we have to insert in between this T network and the Pi network. So this is that half section. So this is at 1 by 2 should be equal to 346.41 ohm and this should be equal to the shandam element should be equal to twice z2 that is equal to 692.82 ohm now this is attached to this end is attached to our This is our Pi network. Okay. Pi network having characteristic impedance is it not pi is equal to 400 ohm. Okay. So the impedance here will be 400 ohm. This will be the impedance that we see from this side of the half section, this matching network. Similarly, on the other end, we have the T network so this is a T network which is having the characteristic impedance is it not T is equal to 600 ohm so the impedance here will be 600 ohm and for this matching network that we have designed here also it will be 600 ohm okay so this much is our matching network that we had designed and inserted in between this T network as well as this Pi network. Okay. So this half section or this L network is going to match these two networks having unequal impedances that is 600 ohm and 400 ohm. Okay, similarly, if we have uh, any uh, network which are having unequal impedances on the other sides, we can use a L section to match them as the impedances between them. Okay, so that they could be connected together for maximum power transfer. So the third example determine the insertion loss when a generator of 50 volt RMS and internal resistance of 40 ohm is matched with a load of 60 ohm 
you see and L network so this is a question so we are asked to find out the insertion loss okay and we are matching a generator of 50 volt RMS and having internal resistance 40 ohm with a load of 60 ohm okay so the picture here is we are having a generator like this so it's having an internal impedance that is a gb equal to 40 ohm so that is given the internal resistance of the generator is 40 ohm and the voltage vg is equal to 50 vrms Now that is connected to a load of 60 ohm. So this is having ZL is equal to 60 ohm. Now this is the picture when the source and the load are directly interfaced together. So, some power, let us say P1 power will be delivered from this source to the load and during that time a current, let us say I1 current is flowing from the source to the load. So, we can evaluate what is this uh, uh, P1 or what is this I1. Okay. So, our aim is to find out the insertion loss. So, we know that the insertion loss could be found out using the expression that is insertion loss in decibel. L dB is equal to 20 log of I1 upon I2. So we'll use this equation. So I1 is the current when the source is directly connected to the load, and I2 is the current that is flowing through the load with the matching network that is inserted in between the source and the load. Okay. So, what is I1 in this picture? From this picture, we can see that a voltage source of 50 volt is connected to two impedances in series that is ZG and ZL. Right. So, the general expression is VG upon ZG plus ZL. So, that will be equal to 50 upon 40 plus 60 so that is 50 upon 100 that is 0.5 ampere and that is the I1 now what happens when we insert a matching network so directly the parameters of the matching network are not given so we have to design a matching network so the question is whether we need to draw the network like this so this is one possibility so here we have our source 
and here we have our load right we can have another possibility is this is also another matching L network that we can draw right so Z a dash and this is Z b dash this is yet another possibility we have Z a dash like this and Z b dash and at this end we have the source and at this end we have the load so which one to select so we have already discussed that if the network is drawn like this the impedance that we see from this end is the Z naught T and the impedance seen from this side that is the shunt side is actually Z naught pi. Same is the case here also. This will be equal to Z naught pi and the impedance seen from this side is actually Z naught T. So which is the greater value? Which is the larger value? Whether out of z0t and z0t pi so we have the expression z0t is equal to root of z1 z2 into 1 plus z1 by 4 z2 right whereas z0t pi is root of z1 z2 divided by 1 plus z1 by 4 z2 these impedances are positive quantities so we can readily see that z0 t is greater than the z0 pi value right so magnitude wise z0 t is greater than the z0 pi the characteristic impedance of the pi network for the same z1 and z2 we have considered so which is the correct network that we can do so when we look at this network which side is having the higher impedance the source end or the load end so at the source we are having only 40 ohm whereas at the load end we are having 60 ohm so which network should we select so the is it not t should face the higher impedance side okay so the network that we are supposed to select is this network right so you have to orient the network the L network like this manner not like this manner okay now coming to the design so the impedance at this side will take as Z not pi so that is should be taken as so we are having the this 40 ohm so this is z not pi is equal to 40 ohm and here we have the impedance is at not t as equal to 60 ohm on the right side we have the 60 ohm right and towards the network it is our is not pi this is our is not t okay so we have is it one into is it two is is it not t into is it not pi so that is 60 into 40 is 24 0 right also we know that is it not t is root of is it one square by 4 plus is it one is it two so it means that 60 is equal to is it one square by 4 plus 
set one is set two is two four double zero. Now what is set one by two? That will be sixty square. Okay, root of sixty square minus two four double zero. So that will be. Sixty square minus two four double zero thirty four point six four one. Okay, that is thirty four point six four one ohm. So what is our? We know that from this equation. From this equation, we can write is it one is it two is two four double zero, and what is is it two two four double zero by is it one? We have is it one by two is this value, so that should be so is it two uh, has to be two four double zero divided by twice. This value, right? Thirty-four point six four one. So that will be two four double zero divided by twice. Answer. That will be thirty-four point. Six four or no? Therefore, twice is a two is equal to zero two sixty nine point two eight sixty nine point two eight oh. Okay. So we got the values of this matching network. So we can draw the network now. So we are having a generator of fifty VRMs and forty ohm internal impedance, which is connected to a sixty ohm load. Right. Now we have the new network. So this is our VG is equal to fifty V R M S, and we are having S G is equal to forty ohm, to which we have attached this. Matching network. So this is our matching network. Okay. Now the values of these elements are: this is equal to z one by two. It's equal to thirty four point six four one ohm, and this is twice z two. That should be equal to sixty nine point two eight ohm. Okay. <coughs> And on the right side, we have the load impedance is it L? So 
so that is equal to 60 ohm now this is our new network with our matching network inserted so this is the matching network that we have designed and inserted between the source and the load okay now we will have a new current that is flowing through the load so that is let us say i2 so some power uh, will be attenuated within this matching network as a result we get a new power that is delivered from the source to the load that is p2 so i2 is will be proportional to this P2. So now what is this I2? What is the impedance that we see from this end is nothing but our Z0 pi. Right. So we are seeing an impedance of 40 ohm from here. So that is what is visible to the source. So using that information we can find out what is the new sending in current IS. So let us call this as IS dash. Now IS dash is equal to VG upon is a G plus is at not pi so that is equal to 50 upon 40 plus 40 so that is 50 upon 80 this point 65 ampere point 65 ampere Okay, now this current is entering this particular node. Okay, it is entering this particular node and some current is flowing down and the remaining current is flowing as the load. Okay, so that same current is this I2. So we can write I2 is in the current divider rule as I2 is equal to the incoming current IS dash into this impedance the opposite branch impedance 2 is a 2 divided by the sum total of the impedances that is 2 is a 2 plus is a 1 by 2 plus is at L right so that will be is dash is 0.625 into opposite branch impedance is 69.28 upon 69.28 plus 34.641 plus 60 okay, that is the current that is going to flow through the load that is ZL so we have 0.625 into 69.28 upon 69.28 plus 34.641 60. So the new current is 0 0.2642. 0 0.2642 ampere. So we have got the currents I1 as well as the I2. Okay, now we can use this equation that is insertion loss is 20 log i1 by i2 
so we have the current i1 as 0 0.5 ampere and i2 we have calculated now so that we can find out the insertion loss so insertion loss l in db is equal to 20 logarithm of i1 upon i2 so that is 20 log 0.5 divided by 0 0.2642 right so that will evaluate to be 20 log to the base 10 of 0.5 upon 0.2642 that is 5.54 decibel so that's the method so with that we come to the conclusion of lecture number 6 So in this lecture, we have seen the iterative impedances of half sections as well as the image impedances of half section. Then we saw what are matching networks. So we saw how to match two networks having unequal impedances using a matching network. Then when we insert such a network, we saw that something called insertion loss is going to happen some power loss is happening which we call as the insertion loss and we saw how to calculate this insertion loss by doing certain tutorial problems for both for matching networks as well as for insertion loss so in the next lecture we will be moving on towards attenuators so we will be seeing the various types of uh, symmetrical as well as asymmetrical attenuators thank you